officials releasing renderings for the new stadium that they hope to have open in time for the 2026 season. Pagula Sports and Entertainment working with the architecture firm Populous to create this idea of what the next Bill Stadium could look like. And we are told this concept is meant to be innovative inside and out, starting with the exterior. The Bills say the design aims to highlight the historical architecture of Buffalo with a modern look. And inside, it's designed to protect fans from the elements while stacked seating will channel the crowd noise onto the field on top of partial roof that designers say keeps the rain and snow off of about 65% of the stands, but also helps block the wind in the entire stadium. We feel like we built the best football stadium for the Buffalo Bills, for the Bills community. It's about family. It's about everything that we celebrate as a community. They hope to hammer out the final details by December, so construction can begin in the spring. A part of that process is reaching a community benefits agreement, and to that end, the county held a special meeting tonight to make sure they've considered everything that could impact the surrounding neighborhoods. Our Sydney Yor went to Orchard Park to hear about the environmental impacts building this $1.4 billion facility could have. Yeah, several concerned Orchard Park community members and business owners attended what was the last public hearing on schedule at the Orchard Park Community Center. Many were hoping for that one last chance to make sure their voices were heard. With regard to the building, it's in the renderings that came out today, they're spectacular. Two brand new renderings of what will soon be the new Bill Stadium were released to the public Thursday morning. And while some fans looked on in excitement, others were not as pleased. We are making the mistake of a lifetime by putting a stadium out here in Orchard Park. Many people who took to the podium made their appreciation for the current home of the Bills known, but beyond that lifelong love is a love for their own homes nearby. I've either seen, heard, or been to every Bills game. We have a grandfathered setback, so if sidewalks go in, okay, you know, I'm gonna lose a good portion of my front lawn. I also don't have any problems with my utilities, and I know that came up before, so I'd like to keep it that way so we don't have an issue with any of the utilities, whether you can't flush your toilets or whatever. Sidewalks on Abbott Road and Utility Watch weren't the only concerns brought up. Many business owners in the area raised questions about economic impact as well. Amber, East Aurora, West Seneca, downtown will do well. We're going to have people driving by, stopping at the gas station, maybe picking up something on the way in and then we won't see them for the rest of the time. One owner of a banquet hall says bridal parties have already expressed concerns. We've lost a lot of business even for next year with brides coming to us, looking at the, at the hall, finding it charming, lovely, well-priced, but what about the noise? What about the construction? What about dust? As a part of the State Environmental Quality Review Act process, at Thursday's public scoping meeting, documents were shared and broken down to help community members understand the process behind some of the decisions in question. Some areas covered in the review are traffic management plans, a noise impact study, and demolition mitigation plans. But the panel, as well as County Executive Mark Polonkar, says things are still subject to change, so community input still counts. These comments will be incorporated and, and will be responded to as part of the final document, which is provided to the legislature. And then the legislature will determine uh, the, the issue associated with the seeker analysis. More information and a link to all of the documents from the Seeker Environmental Review can be found at our website at WKBW.com. There you can also find a link to all of the information and you can submit your own questions and comments. They'll be taking those until November 2nd. In the studio, I'm Sydney Orr, 7 News.